Hello and welcome to our live event tonight. It's 8 p.m. UK time. So as you know, it is definitely time to start our live event. It is good to be back here once again. And as you can see, we do have a very special guest with us tonight. So I would like to welcome uh, Ofra Balaban. Hello, Ofra. How are you feeling tonight? Well, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much already for joining our Stronger Together. Thank you for having me. And we are definitely happy to have you with us. And also thank you for bringing this topic. I'm sure it's going to be very, very interesting for all of you. And you will see that um, Afra will also tell you a little bit on her story as well. And as always, before we go ahead with the presentation, let me mention that, as we know, we are here every single day as we want to support you. We want to give you the insights from top fertility experts, but also fertility coaches and anyone that uh, can actually help you out with your questions but also uh, encourage you and provide some advice and that is why we are here every single day as you know we are here from uh, the middle of September and we are slowly finishing those IVF webinars this year but we will be back for sure. And uh, I also want to thank our ambassadors and partners for their support. And they have been uh, supporting our Stronger Together initiative from the very beginning. So from March, when we started our Stronger Together first edition, this is the second edition, and they are keep on going and supporting us. Thanks a lot for that. And as you've seen, we will uh, go ahead with the presentation that Ofra uh, has prepared. It's the, the topic, how to manage your treatment. And let me just also uh, mention that um, Ofra, she is actually the founder and the chair of Chen, uh, which is a patient fertility association. She will definitely tell you a little bit more on what uh, they are doing there. And of course, I just also want to uh, mention that I'm very, very happy and excited to have you with us, Ofra. And uh, we are connected tonight uh, with Tel Aviv. So uh, hello to Tel Aviv as well and Ofra. Are you ready to go ahead with your presentation? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Thank Good evening, so much. everybody. My name is, as said before, my name is Ofra Balaban, uh, and I'm the founder and the chair of Chen Patient Fertility Association in Israel. And this association is a member of the um, umbrella organization named Fertility Europe. Uh, as you can see on your screen, you have all the details. You can connect us with uh, via email, and we are very, will be very pleased to assist anybody that need it. The subject today is a very important subject for every infi uh, infertile uh, patient because fertility journey is a long, frustrating, and difficult for anybody. It's alone with uh, shame, sometimes taboo, nobody to speak with, and everybody think that he is the only one in the world that couldn't conceive and need medical assistance in order to do that. And finally, it's not that only, but everybody can, even cats and dogs. And me, I have PhD in uh, whatever, and I cannot. How can it be? It's some kind of self-frustration, self-taboo, and nobody speaks about it. So our association uh, was founded after my personal, my personal experience. Uh, my husband and I tried to conceive for seven years, and we have nobody to speak with, and we couldn't consult with anybody. But finally, we managed to have two children. One is 22 and uh, the eldest one is 26. And I must say my uh, experience told me that I need to do something for infertile patient. So we decided 
that we will create this association as an NGO. It's named after my father. My father died only three weeks before my eldest son was born. He knew that he's going to be a grandfather, but he didn't have the, the chance to meet the, the newborn. And since I didn't want my son to be a gravestone, memorial stone, I, his name is Yoav, and we create the association Chen because this is what was his name. And Chen in Hebrew is Grace. This is the name. So I've, of course, consulted my uh, sister and my brothers. And after I got their uh, 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 acceptance and confirmation, we established the association. And what we are doing, we are the roof organization in Israel regarding all is needed for infertile person from emotional support, informational support, to the big job of changing uh, laws, like the law of egg donation in Israel. And you know, in Israel, it's pretty easy because we have the religious uh, parties in the parliament, the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. So it is the first amendment to reproduct. So I have, I have had all the assistance and support I needed in the parliament. But even though it took 13 years to change the law regarding egg donation in Israel, but uh, 2010, we succeeded. And now we have a law which allows uh, everybody to donate with some restrictions. And the donation of eggs comes with a price, which is uh, the donor uh, receive about 20,000 knees for the attempt for every attempt, she can do it only three times, and it comes from the Ministry of Health. So it was a huge law, and now we are moving on to change the law for embryo donation, which is not allowed in Israel, but I'm optimistic, and I, knew, I know that I will succeed. So Khan Association was established. We have about the uh, 5,000 uh, members in the association and we are trying and it's fully volunteered. This is one of the few uh, NGOs in Israel that are fully volunteered. And of course, the reason is that it's named after my father and it has to be clean as a whistle. So we, che we check one of the aspects of managing the treatment. Infertile treatment, as you probably know, is one month cycle, and then you have to rest a little bit, and then you have another cycle, and the doctor will manage it. But if you have any other problem, chronic problems, and gynecologists are not familiar with it, the, the problem, it might be a big obstacle to move on regarding medicine, regarding other situation, and so on. My co-partner my co is Dr. Rachel Berry to this research. It is only a pilot, but it's a very, very important in my opinion. So the way to create happy family, it's not always natural as we saw, we said before, and not everybody have the ability to do that. In Israel, it's about 10% of the couples. Uh, in Europe, more close to 5,000, 5% uh, of the couples. And we know that about 25 million couples in Europe are suffering from uh, infertility and need doctors to assist them to conceive. Infertility treatments like IVF treatment is a long and frustrating job, uh, journey. It can be a case of multidisciplinary condition that more than one doctor is needed to handle. Let's take an example. Uh, a diabetic, a diabetic uh, person, woman, that needs 
to check uh, her diabetic situation every day, and she also need uh, infertility treatment like IVF. Now we have two doctors that are treating the same lady, and as you know, when you have IVF treatment, you need to take some hormones. Hormones are influencing the balance of sugar in the body. So what you do? So when you are in an uh, IVF journey and you suffer cr a chronic condition like diabetes or other disease, few med medical doctors are your partners to the journey. You need for a, do uh, for a doctor, if you need one doctor, it's very hard. But if you're dealing with more than one doctor, it's harder. Lack of communication between the doctors, it is a disaster. Why I'm saying that? As we, let's go back to the, to the sample. She is diabetic and she had a, a diabetic doctor that uh, helped her. And now she's on a journey to, for a fertility treatment. And now they, she needs to have hormones. The gynecologist doesn't know exactly how the hormones will affect the sugar level in her body. It needs to be checked. But it needs to be checked and controlled by the diabetic doctor as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a disaster because if they won't talk to each other, it will be a difficult to manage how many hormones, how many insulin, and so on. They must talk to each other. They are, it's a must. And for the patient, it's really a disaster if they don't talk. So we are in, in Hen, uh, Patient uh, Fertility Association conducted a small pilot research. The research conducted together with Dr. Rachel Berry, which is a biologist, and she is a volunteer in our association, a board member, of course. Now, what we did, we had a questionnaire to three groups of participants. One is the IVF doctors. The other group is the professional doctors, like diabetic doctors or uh, other, um, for uh, example, gastroenterologist doctors uh, that treat chronic um, chronic uh, treatment with patients. Most of them are women. And we have also rheumatologist. It's also uh, known as a women uh, illness. And of course, we ask the opinion of patient organizations. And in Israel, we have many patient organizations. For each disease, we have a patient organization, organization. So it was very important for us to hear them and to listen to their opinion about this crucial point of communication between doctors. And if there is a lack of communication, who does the connection? Who is the link? So we asked them, a, uh, we gave them a, a questionnaire to all the group and asked them what happened while a patient that suffered from more uh, chronic condition, more than one con uh, that has a con uh, chronic condition like diabetes and needs also IVF treatment. Well, by analyzing the answer, we learned about three very basic facts. One was patient NGO are relevant source for patient information. It's not the doctors. Usually doctors don't have enough time to speak with the patient, first of all. Second, patients are usually the link between the different doctors. It's not that one doctor pick up the phone and speak to another doctor and said, listen, I'm treating now a diabetic lady that is your patient. Now she's going to IVF um, treatment. What is your opinion? 
what are your recommendations? It's not. And the third fact we learned is that in the past, doctors did not speak to each other at all. But today, it's a little bit better. They do, but it's not enough and it's not sufficient. And in the, the point of sufficient is that actually, they have only a general talk at the first time of the IVF treatment. But afterwards, they talk via papers. One doctor write to another doctor, and again, we're going back to the patient that really is the link between two doctors. And this is a very unhealthy situation because, you know, we as a patient, we know very good our situation and our condition, but we cannot take any medical decisions. And while doing IVF, you need a decision almost every day. So it's crucial that there's going to be an open talking line between the two doctors that are dealing with the same patient, and it still doesn't. The results, these results can bring us to a major conclusion. Patients are the main link between doctors from different disciplines for the IVF treatment success rate. And what we recommend is, we recommend the doctor societies to train their members, doctors, to communicate and teach the doctors the importance of communication between doctors of different disciplines that treats the same patient, especially an IVF treatment. This is crucial. IVF treatment is a chronic treatment, but it does happen 10 days per month, not every month, but you learn or change the treatment in every treatment, in every cycle, and according to test, you decide how many hormones the woman has to get. Now, if she is a diabetic, she needs also to consult her diabetic doctor again and again, again and again, is it safe for me to take 2cc or 3cc of that or other medication? It's crucial because otherwise the medication will not work or will bring her diabetic situation to some high levels or low levels of sugar in blood and it can be a danger to her life. So sometimes the communication between the doctors can save lives. So we need to change the situation. We need our doctors to speak with each other. I can share with you my personal situation. When I had, when I was at the first steps of my uh, journey to have a happy family, and I have a, two chronic uh, conditions. I have arthritis and I have also Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a problem in the stomach and, uh, and uh, a rheumatic uh, disease is the joints. But the problem was the stomach. After two years, when I saw that nothing works, I went to my gastroenterologist and I said, listen, I'm a, on a IVF treatment and nothing works and I need to know why. And I need you to speak with my gynecologist. He looked at the medication and you know what? I, I took a medication that stopped ovulation. Ovulation is monthly cycle that bring the egg from the... Um, uh, to the womb from uh, 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 from the first day of the cycle. And this problematic issue was only medication. We need to, I had to change my medication 
because the ovary, my ovary, didn't ovulate at all. And I didn't have any ovulation that needed for um, IVF cycle. So I went back to my gynecologist and I said, listen, now the, the gastroenterologist is waiting for your phone call. They spoke, they changed my medication, and you know what? It's a miracle. I start ovulating. So I lost two years in, IV, in uh, fertility treatments just because the wrong medication. So imagine yourself, it was a diabetic. It can be a disaster. And speaking about miracle, we are very close. We are very close to a holiday named Hanukkah here in Israel. And this is uh, the spin-off of uh, the holiday. And what we are doing with it, you see there are letters here. They said it's a, a miracle happened here. And children are playing with this spinning. And the miracle, according to the story in the tradition, uh, the tradition and traditional story was that in the synagogue, there was only one bottle of oil to light the synagogue. And nobody knew how they make it for the eight days of the holiday. And a miracle happens. And this small amount of oil in the bottle to light the candles, whatever they had in the menorah there, was enough for eight days. And this is a miracle. The miracle of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is always close to, um, um, to the new year and always for uh, close to Christmas. So all the religious religious are very close and celebrating a miracles that happen when the year is changing. So we need sometimes miracle in order to conceive. Sometimes we need a miracle in order to keep the pregnancy. And we always need a miracle to give birth to a healthy child and to have a happy family to be created. I thank you so much for your uh, kind welcome. And I hope my lecture was a good um, support for you with information. And if anything else is needed, we in Hen Association can be for you. Thank you very much and have a Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you indeed so much, Ofra, for uh, that presentation. It definitely sounds interesting. And, uh, well, it's definitely, um, you've been a lot and great help to many, many of you, I'm sure, simply because, you know, it's something that you have uh, mentioned during your presentation about the connection. And actually, there we do have a question in regards to this uh, as well. And uh, before we go ahead with the questions, uh, let me remind everyone, if you would like to ask anything, go ahead and type the questions in the chat section and uh, Ofra, I'm sure, will be happy to help you out. And, uh, well, once again, are you ready to answer some of the questions, Ofra? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed as well. And let's have a look at the first question. Are you ready to do one or do I have to get out of here? Now, it's over. <laughs> so um, here's the um, question, the first one. What would you advise to do if the doctor is not willing to cooperate with my fertility doctor? I don't want to change him, but he constantly says that he's busy and is postponing it all the time. Uh, it seems impossible to kind of connect them at the same time. I am having an IVF uh, cycle abroad. Anything you can advise? Uh, change your doctor, your home doctor. Because uh, a doctor that doesn't want to, to be with you on your journey is not the doctor you need. Sometimes people say, okay, but he's very, very professional. Listen, a good doctor is the, the, the doctor that gives you the answers you need. And this is the important for your uh, for your journey he doesn't want to speak but you don't want to change him 
it's a difficult situation. He always says he's uh, busy, make the, uh, the gynecologist uh, phone him or WhatsApp him. They need to speak because it's crucial for you. I don't know your condition, your uh, chronic condition, but in my opinion, a good doctor is a doctor that answers to your questions, cooperate with the other doctor, especially with such sensitive situation. I hope I help. Thank you so much for your very first question, Kat, and of course, Safra, for, from, for your advice. Uh, I do, totally agree because this is definitely something that has to be discussed and, and we are hoping that, uh, fingers crossed, that everything will be okay and you will be able to simply um, connect both of them as well. Thank you so much indeed. And let's have a look, okay, for next question is from Denisa, possibly you can advise something. So what to do in a case of low ovarian reserve with AMH at 0 0.20, I am 37. Uh, yeah, 37, sorry. Uh, at the age of 37, it's the start of declining because we know that the the first declining, average declining of women fertility is 27. But after 35, it's major declining. All right. I'm not a doctor. You have to consult your doctor. But if the AMH is over two, maybe it's too high. I don't, I'm not sure. But you need to ask your doctor what to do and what will be the right way because low uh, ovarian reserve, it's saying that in, in a year or two, you will not be able to produce good egg for fertility. This is the meaning of it. So you have to ask your doctor what to do. Maybe the right way to deal with it is to, to uh, recruit as many as eggs you can do now and freeze them. Egg freezing, we know it's a very efficient way of preserving your fertility for next years. But it's a medical question and I prefer you ask your doctor. And that's of course completely understandable. So um, thank you so much for your question and also for, uh, for your advice uh, as well. And as Ofra has mentioned, uh, best to, it's best, definitely best to contact with your uh, doctor and again of course we are always um fingers crossing everyone here so go ahead um all right so let's uh, have a look at the um, next question that we have right here would you know the likelihood of a live birth or at least a transfer of three eight cell three day embryos i am 41 in general 41 is a uh quite high age in general. I don't know what will be the likelihood of uh, life birth. Transfer can be about 10, 10 to 15%. I'm not sure about all the percentage, but you know, in order to have a very a successful IVF treatment, you need good eggs, good sperm, and good um, a, a, a good womb with um, ability to conceive, meaning it's all all the nature that uh, stays there, meaning uh, the wall of the womb should be uh, good enough and also all the all the uh, layers should be there. And it has to be more than eight millimeters, if I, I remember well. So it is very important that you will ask your doctor about it. Uh, in Israel, we recommend to implement only one embryo at a time and freeze the other embryos for the next time meaning to create more trials than 
a situation that less trials and more embryos, but also it's also a medical decision. And I don't want you to be disappointed, Maria, but I, I really want you to ask your doctor because it might be that you have a very good embryos that look very well. And if they have eight cells, so they, they are probably very good embryos. I wish you all the success, but I don't know the exact likelihood about the transfer. But usually we say that uh, IVF is about 25 success rate. Success rate, it means that you uh, reach the transfer date. Now, how many embryos? Usually one is good enough. We need only one. And the other should be uh, freeze separately. So I wish you luck. Well, of course, again. I definitely agree here. Thank you so much, uh, Ofra, for uh, your advice. And um, actually, there is a follow-up, okay, from Maria. So please uh, have a look at it. Eight cell embryos, does that mean that they are good, of good quality, or is it more information needed? I will only transfer one at a time. Well, um, eight cell, it cells, uh, uh, cell embryo, it means that we can see in the laboratory that they are divided well. We don't know anything about genetics. We don't all know anything about the nuclear uh, situation. We don't know anything about the mitochondria situation. Mitochondria is the, the small units that are around the nuclear of the cell. And we don't know nothing about genetics. If we want to be sure, you can ask the doctors to take one cell out of the embryo. You will remain with eight cells, it doesn't matter. And then to make a genetic uh, test. Then you will have the information for uh, anything you want to know if they are good. Good quality, it means good genetics, because the problem with eggs or oocytes is that they are born with us, the ladies. At the age of three months, the embryo is already has, the female embryo already has its um, oocytes. So if I'm 60, my eggs are, or oocytes are, 60 and six months. Now, as long as we got older, the uh, oocytes are getting older too. And if so, the problem is that oocytes that getting older, it means there are mistakes in the nuclear and in the genes or chromosomal, uh, chromosomal situation that duplicate during the, uh, during the fertility process. And we don't know exactly what are the mistakes until, fortunately, we see the results. It can be that the embryo is not um, become an embryo, a good embryo that uh, revolves in the hum, uh, womb, and it could be, so we have a small abortion or so. And if it does succeed to have, to be in the womb, we don't know what will be the results of the baby. And we don't know exactly which diseases can, be, can happen because of this mistake of doubling or of the uh, chromosomes. So we don't know exactly about good quality without doing a genetic test, even a one cell genetic uh, test, one uh, cell from the embryo to be taken out and have the genetic, uh, genetic, uh, genetic tests. It's really expensive and doctors do that only if they don't have enough or other choices. So it's very important that you have a discussion, open discussion with your doctor. Ask him all the questions and dialogue with him regarding the best way to do 
your journey. I wish you luck, of course. And once again, thank you so much uh, for that follow-up, Maria, as well. And of course, there is a thank you from uh, Maria for your offer. Thank you so much indeed uh, for your uh, that. And uh, right now, someone is typing, so we just need, it, uh, need uh, a minute to see the next question. So if you have any left, go ahead and type those in. And yes, and this is the next question right here. It's a bit of a longer question. So let's go ahead with that. Let's try to deal with it. Yes, of course. Let's have a look. The IVF doctor does not talk to me directly during preparation of cycles, only via assistant. My hormone levels are not checked during IVF pregnancies. Clinic is abroad and I have to get all medication from local doctor too. I have endometriosis by gynecologist, again another doctor, um, high blood pressure doctor, yet another doctor. Doctors don't talk to each other. What would you recommend to me to do? Is this the right clinic? All IVF failed most at the five... Uh, um, fifth, sorry, fifth weeks, even donor X. Thank you. Endometriosis is a very uh, difficult disease. It means that the fluid from the womb that usually go out with our monthly period is not completely out. And if it's not completely out, it means it remains either in the womb or outside in the, uh, of the womb and makes some kind of uh, problems like nozzles and it's damaged the, the wall of the womb and of course blocking the tubes, a lot of problematic uh, situation. Now, I don't know your age, but what I think you need to do is ask your doctor, the doctor that treats you, uh, what about the endometriosis situation? This is first. Second, hormones levels are not checked. It's, it's a bit of problem because endometriosis is something that react to hormones. Actually, if we want to put it that way, uh, the, treatment, the treatment against endometriosis will be pills, birth control pills, something like this. So it's hormone dependent. So it's a very delicate situation. It's a must that the doctor that deal with your endometriosis will speak with the doctor that uh, uh, you are doing IVF with and regarding high blood pressure it's something that has to be uh, dealing before IVF treatment so if you have time first of all balance your high blood pressure and then balance your endometriosis and then go to IVF treatment and you are doing a donor if it's donor eggs you need to have a wall, uh, clean walls of womb. This is what I know. And the last thing is that I, again, I'm not a doctor. I am a well-trained patient. So you must ask all of them the question in writing, show the answer to each doctor. This is the link I've talked about, that the patient is the link between the doctors. So you sh should ask the doctors, each doctors, each one of the doctors, you should ask the questions, return, get from them the answers, and send the answer to the other doctor. The other doctor must consult both of them. But if they don't, you have to circulate all the answers and get to a conclusion. Otherwise, you have to wait and see that high blood pressure is balanced. And of course, endometriosis is in a good condition. And as always, I wish you luck. It's not easy. And uh, actually, if egg donors doesn't help, it means that the endometriosis is the factor that disturb 
all IVF to be failing uh, such. All right, wonderful. Thank you indeed so much for that advice. And there is also a thank you from uh, from our patients. So let's have a look. Thank you so much for your very valuable advice. I'm grateful to you. We'll follow your advice. Okay, that's uh, definitely good to hear. I and hope to hear good news from you, Beata. Yes, that's for sure. And there is one more. We'll do. Our doctors communicate to each other. Yes, exactly. This is the way to do it. I definitely agree. Of, of course, course, there's another thank you. Thank you indeed so much. And um, let's have a look. Okay, mm, from our there is a follow up also from our previous uh, patient from Maria. If this okay. first IVF fails, what are the things that look that I should look at doing differently for the next cycle, apart from changing from short to long protocol? I am already eating healthy. It's good that you're eating healthy, first of all. Balance your weight, it's also good. Now, again, this is a medical, the medical question, and you need to ask your doctor about it. I cannot, I cannot uh, tell you anything about it because it's medical. Do, you should not do anything about changing your cycle. It's the doctor to think what can be the problem and if anything should be changed. It's not me to answer that. It's only your doctor. Dialogue with your doctor. And good luck for that. And of course, again, thank you so much and for this uh, as well. And yeah, of course, the Maria has added. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay. Well, next question is from uh, Kat. It's um, also in regards to what our previous uh, previous patient in regards to the clinics. Um, uh, so let's have a look. What would be your advice when it comes to choosing a clinic? What are the most important aspects we should look at? There are so many of them and they seem so similar sometimes. I want to change my clinic after two fight attempts with donor eggs, but I am not sure if it's the right way. Choosing the right clinic, sometimes it's a personal choose, choice, sometimes, if you know them. Sometimes it's better to ask your doctor who is recommending about, because Every doctor has some connections with somebody. And I have a feeling that if he will send you to a, to a clinic, he probably may be in touch with them and connect with them during the treatments. So maybe you can ask your doctor who is the, the clinic he is recommended and if we will say, I'm not recommending anything, then you should check who is the one to be with you. Is it a doctor? Is it a, a assistance? Who? We need, now you have experience. You had already two, uh, two attempts. Now you know the feeling when it's not the doctor that talked with you. So, now you need the real thing. You need a doctor that will treat you. You need a clinic that has a, a formal uh, good rate in, uh, in the clinic uh, situation. Sometimes in every country, you can see in the Ministry of Health, they have some list of clinics. So it might be a good way to look for a new clinic if it's in a country that has such things. I know that in the uh, UK they have. I know uh, in other countries, European countries they have. Check it. I'm not sure that, I... of course you need to, ah, it's uh, also donor eggs. So when you're dealing with donor eggs, you need to, all, to, need to know the information about the donor. What the colors, what the age, is she is uh, uh, keeping good health, whatever. See, feel how they talk to you and not only the marketing talk. Go behind it. 
try to look for more information than usual. Now you have a little bit of experience, try to listen and ask the questions about how did they work, what will be the, the timing, what are they giving to you, what information they supply you with. All that can be in a big table saying, okay, this is the right clinic for me. I hope you will succeed. And indeed, once again, thank you so much for that uh, question and your, again, advice, for, of course, as well. And again, fingers crossed, indeed. Yeah, okay. to all of us. Okay. Exactly. Um, okay, next question. Again, it's a bit of a medical one, okay, but I will show you anyway. So just uh, see what you can do here. With my with my 0 0.20 AMH, my doctor recommended a natural cycle starting with Etrazole. What is your opinion? Because with Gonal, I have two IVFs failed and I'm not responding uh, good in stimulation. This is a good idea to have a, a natural cycle without any medication. Maybe in this way, the body was, will not be crazy because of hormones, you know, and it will be more, uh, more successful. I'm not sure. But sometimes I know the doctors here in Israel either make a natural cycle or if they already has uh, embryos, they are waiting, freeze them and wait two months until the body relaxes and then insert the, uh, uh, an embryo to the womb according to the natural, cy natural cycle of you, your natural cycle. So it, it depends. It's a medical and listen to your doctor. And you know what? Sometimes it's better to have one doctor to be consulted with in every field of medication, uh, medicine, of course, but don't listen to others. If you choose this doctor, listen to him. Ask the right questions. All right. Uh, sorry, the, the Nisa has added. Yeah, it's the same that my doctor says. Thanks. Okay. I'm very happy that I said something that is like professionals. Of course. Thank you so much indeed as well for uh, that. And well, um, right now at least we do not see any questions, so we will be slowly finishing. But before I let you go, Ofra, uh, if anyone else have any other questions, of course, you can go ahead and type those in. This is like the final call for those questions. But I also want to mention that, again, if you would like to get some more details from Ofra or you would like to ask about, about any, um, I mean, about her association and uh, uh, you would like to get some or more details or fertility uh, rope of course yes. then feel free to get in touch with her you can use the link that i'm about to send yeah it has been sent just now this is the uh, link email, and there is yeah. via email please yes uh, this will be sent of course there is an option to uh, get in touch and that that means um you will receive this offer as well okay so this is your email there provided so all will be uh, forwarded a, uh, to you. perfect um okay so we will be finishing i do have another thank you here so let me show you and there's also um thank you from from our previous patient thank you for your advice thank you very much good information and good advice Thanks indeed. And as you can see, more of those things are coming up for you, Afra. Um, Thank so you for having me. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope that I help a little bit it, just to rethink about all that uh, situation because it's really frustrating. I know it. And I hope that I help, I help a little bit. And I wish you all Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to the Jews. Uh, of uh, one of us of, that are Jews and hope you will make a, a success journey to be happy family. And that was, uh, I guess, enough said then when it comes to that. Fingers crossed to all of you for sure. And as you can see, thank you uh, for the valuable presentation and for the link. Uh, Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah, of course. Uh, thank okay. you indeed. Yeah.
it's, much. it's been a pleasure to have you, Afra. And uh, I just also want to mention that it has been recorded, so you will have a chance to re-watch it. So uh, it will be available on our website, myivfanses.com, but also on our YouTube channel, as you know. And uh, if you would like to get uh, some more um, webinars also, they are that you can find them on our website. But uh, there are some more events coming up. We will be back on Friday. This time we will be back on Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. So I do hope to see you as well. Ofra, it's I, been a great pleasure as well to have you. I hope that I was a, a good ambassador for IVF patients uh, in your uh, my IVF answers uh, and IVF webinars. So. Yes, we need we are... all the ambassadors that there are, and I'm willing to, to participate in the ambassadors' uh, uh, journey. So, if you want, I'm willing to participate in that whenever that you need is it. wonderful to hear. And thank you so much for supporting this whole uh, initiative. It's great, great pleasure to have you, and there's a, it's a great. Um, we are definitely happy to have you on board for sure. Thank you so much indeed. Have a lovely evening or day because i know some of you are uh probably in the middle of the day so thank you so much for joining and spend this uh, time. almost 11 o'clock at night exactly so okay. you afra have a good night as well of course thank you once take more uh, once more and uh, take care everyone and hope to see you back here pretty much soon as well thank you afra once more once more thank bye you bye bye